So I think we have to look to keep a look on this euro funding the US and, and vice versa in terms of uh, the money is it is the money coming back or is the money still flowing out with the uh, the fear of uh, tightening in the US uh, and tightening in Europe especially on the funding side Mortaza, thank you very much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you in our studio. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. So we're going to have a, a, a little look at the, the markets in general, just to start off with. It has been quite a volatile, crazy couple of weeks. Why, why is this? Can you explain that? Why? Yeah, I indeed. The, the, the past three weeks have been like quite hectic. Uh, return of volatility, big swings in the market, especially decline in, in the equity and commodity markets. Um, we view it that as, as two events. Uh, of course, on the short term event is sort of a, a squeeze of, you know, short vol uh, exposure, momentum exposure and people that will squeeze into a liquidity um, issue um, in the market and uh, but the, the larger picture is a, I think is a story of flow of funds uh, which brings volatility and squeeze some market participants so uh, it was an incident to, waiting to happen for like let's say the volatility um, short trade uh, but the real trigger is uh, is I think the in the repatriation of, of um, European assets from the American market it's been Three, three to five years, Europeans have been funding the US. Uh, low rates or negative interest rates in Europe by the ECB has pushed uh, Europeans to find uh, yield in the US market, especially on the treasuries market. So you have a trade which is short uh, two-year bond or at least uh, being funded in two-year swap uh, in euro and being invested in 10-year treasuries. Those, this, this trade has been accumulated into like hundreds of, of billions because yeah. every year European Union has in, in a surplus in the current account, especially coming from, from Germany, and it goes to the US, funding the US and explaining why rates in the US, long-term rates have been so low, uh, so late in the cycle. And this money is being repatriating. So this explained for the last nine months, I think, the increase in euro dollar, and at some point, when there was this acceleration in euro dollar earlier this this year, it triggered an increase in volatility, especially on the bond market, and then it's it's, it's spilled over in the equity market where uh, the the short volatility to trade was was much uh, much bigger. So I think we have to look to keep a look on this euro funding the U.S. and and vice versa in terms of uh, the money is it is the money coming back or is the money still flowing out with the uh, the fear of. Uh, tightening in the US uh, and tightening in Europe, especially on the funding side. Um, for, you know, looking forward for all the, the Forex exposure, the Forex um, parities, and how it involves into other markets. I think the, the Forex market is the key driver yeah. into how the volatility play will, will remain in the market. Mm. So let's just look a little bit more specifically at the, the US dollar as a whole. What's been going on with that currency and what you kind of expect to see going forward? I think that's that's the key question, as I was saying. And, and to be very specific, it's quite hard, but we, we, we have a view that on the short term, the, the dollar has still a way to, to strengthen. Uh, it's been oversold. And I think the idea of uh, of um, of the Fed being uh, uh, late or uh, behind the curve is is a mistake. I think the Fed is is quite appropriate and uh, and it brings a lot of carry trade interest of being of being exposed in the U.S. dollar. There is more than 250 basis points spread between um, euro and and uh, and the dollar so i think it's there is an incentive to be to be long the dollar um, and to play this short-term reversal uh, we we look at i think at least to to go back to 120 or a little bit below um, the trend of overall is, is still on a weakening of the dollar but this trend is going to 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 be set for at least 12 months or 18 months so short term is along the dollar for the reversal and um, and then go go along the euro um, because on a fundamental basis i was saying the european union is funding the us so still the money means that there is a, a higher fundamental value of the euro 
long term. Uh, there is lower inflation, uh, there is better fiscal policy now, there is much more fiscal discipline, and the Euro project, the MU project, is, I think, less, uh, less at risk um, on, on a two or three years basis. So I think the trend is still a strengthening of the Euro, and um, especially if Europeans start to repatriate uh, massively. But short term, I think it's, it's the dollar is oversold. Um, so it means also that a lot of, of uh, you know, forex exposure around the dollar are going to be interesting. For instance, uh, the euro yen, the dollar yen, sorry. Yeah. Uh, if the dollar strengthened, the yen is likely to, to weaken and it's very positive for uh, Japanese equities. So this is, I would say, secondary, secondary, sec Secondary uh, other effects mm -hmm. uh, on markets, uh, but I think I would be I would be selling the the yen. I would be long the dollar for the short term basis. Okay, fantastic. D just finally to finish up, then can you talk us through a little bit of your global asset allocation? So our global asset allocation is is. Um, is very consistent with what we call a late cycles phase. Late cycle phase as brings a lot of volatility, which is very hard, especially on the currency basis, to find out direction given reversal, exaggeration, and and uh, and, and speculative market. But a late stage market means that you should play on commodities. We are long energy on our set allocation, especially oil. Um, we are long equities. But late cycle equities are still uh, a, a positive, it's still a bullish trend, but the cost of volatility is higher compared to a recovery or early phase of, of, uh, of growth where the bull market is low vol, higher, higher, um, higher increase. So I would say on the sharp ratio basis, equity are less interest, less attractive than a year ago, uh, but we're still exposed and still overweight on equities. And we're still underweight on, on fixed income, sovereign. Uh, but I think this position is going to be revised on a six month horizon. Further along the late stage, you would have to see a rotation on bonds. And it's very likely in end of June, maybe in the summer, going back long on the, on the treasury or long duration on the bonds. But we have to look at the markets and, and especially on the economic data. I think uh, data are very strong, ISM, PMI um, and inflation is a bit on the on the on the upside. So uh, we're still we are still high, you know, above the cycle, um, but it could last more than six months. So we're just data dependent on on what would be the next move. But globally, we are long commodities, long energy, uh, and long equities. Mataza, thank you so Thanks much for lot. speaking with us. It's always an absolute pleasure. I'm sure it helped a lot of people. Thanks. And thank you for watching. If you like this interview and would like to find out more, be sure to head over to dukascopy.tv.